So to each and every one of you, so today um, let's check um, tropical cyclones. So I'm going to be looking at tropical cyclones and the climate and the weather. Okay, is a major topic in geography. Uh, so 1.1 says refer to the South African synoptic weather map. The letters A, B, C, and D have been printed on the synoptic weather map. Okay, so as you can see on our synoptic weather map, we have um, A, B, C, um, A, B, C, and D down there. Okay, yeah. Okay. So let's jump to. Okay, so you know that these are tropical cyclones, guys. Okay. Yes, or it's a tropical cyclone. As you can see, our um, the illustration of the tropical cyclone there moving in a clockwise direction, okay? Or rotating in a clockwise movement, okay? Yeah. Clockwise circulation around the tropical cyclone, okay? Yes. And you know that this tropical cyclone originates from the from the East Ocean, the warm East Ocean, okay? Yeah. And affecting or impacting negatively the eastern part of the African continent or the coastal eastern part of the African continent. Okay, yes, as you know, that the direction of the um, tropical cyclone is southwesterly direction from the um, north east position. Okay, yeah, so it's moving like this. Okay, yes, so when it reaches um, these places like Mozambique or, or other countries that are close to the coastal. In the eastern part of the continent, so they also can get affected by these tropical cyclones, which are very destructive, causing very, very heavy rainfalls. Um, yeah, so with high wind speeds, okay, yes, there's more infrastructure that is going to be destructed by these tropical cyclones. So, as it moves downwards, maybe at least around um, your Mozambique, the, 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 the top areas around South Africa, maybe let's say close to South Africa or maybe Zimbabwe, at least around at this point we have our 20 degrees south of the equator, okay? If you have 20 degrees south of the equator, at least around here, so the tropical cyclone becomes weaker. And when it becomes weak, it turns back to the, it changes the direction to southeasterly direction, okay? Yes. So, the other thing that makes this tropical cyclone less destructive now when it reaches the because of the friction, okay, between the cyclone as well as the land, okay, yeah. So the land it stops it down, so it stops its momentum to decrease, so that it can um, it can extract less or it can um, lose its momentum. Okay, yes. So yeah. So by that, that's why maybe I can say mostly some of the parts of South Africa are not being affected by this tropical cyclone, okay? Yes, so it's mostly Mozambique, your upper parts of Zimbabwe, your, yeah, so, but mostly it's Mozambique, guys, okay? Yes, okay, I think I've tried to, to nail that, okay? Yeah, okay, so let's erase that and jump into questions. Let's erase that and jump into our questions. Uh huh. Okay. So, question 1.1.1. Give, give one piece of evidence from the synoptic weather map that indicates that the map represents a summer situation. So, let's look at our map and pick up some features that this synoptic weather map represents a summer situation. Okay, guys, number one is the heat low. Okay, that is in the interior of South Africa. You know that during summer we have heat low, we have low pressure in the interior of South Africa. Why? Because there's more rising air during summer season. Okay, because the equator is slightly closer uh, the, the country of South Africa. Okay, yes, as well as the high pressure cells moved upwards. However, in winter you'd find that in the interior of South Africa in there high pressure cell which is called the continental high but now in summer we have what we have the uh, heat low that's number one number two is the significance of the position of the of these um of the 
is um, the hypercell. The south hypercell as well as the Indian hypercell. I at least moved downwards. So Shin, they move downwards. Okay, in the summer and in winter, they move. They move upwards. At least the position um, of these hypercell, the south Indian high as well as the high at this position. Okay, in the winter. But now it's summer, they moved downwards. So that's what you can say. That's the reason why it's in summer. The other thing that you can take there, guys, is the cloud cover. You can see um, the clouds that are covering the interior of South Africa. Overcasted clouds, mostly in the eastern side of South Africa. Okay. Yes, as well as in the interior around this coastal low. Uh, so sorry, around this uh, heat low. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So sorry. Okay. So. What else that you can say? The significance or the illustration of the of the tropical cyclone. Tropical cyclone okay in which season? In summer season. Okay? Yes. So there's more that you can say guys in this case, okay? Yes. So let's move on. So you'll choose which one you'd like to you'd like to um, pose or write down um, as an illustration that or as a proof that Synaptic weather map represents a summer season. Okay, yeah. So you choose which one. Okay, the one that was uh, needed was only one, which is one mark. Okay, so let's move to 1.1.2. Describe the pressure gradient at A. So let's describe the pressure gradient at A. Okay, you can see the pressure gradient at A. The isopars are at least far from each other. Okay, at least far apart. Okay, yes, you know that the pressure gradient, um, yeah, when the isopods are far from each other, it shows that the pressure gradient is is um, gentle. So at A, the pressure gradient is gentle. When the isopods are close to each other, it's steeper. Okay, yes. So the pressure gradient is gentle. Okay, yes, I mean that is very, very low pressure there. Okay. Again, mind you guys, it's it's summer, okay? Yes, yeah, so that's why maybe it's uh, that's why, by the way, it is um, gentle, okay? Yes, which represents low pressure. So we've so yeah, so gentle, okay? Yeah. So let's move to 1.1.3. Identify the pressure cells B and C respectively. So, what's the high pressure cell B and C? Let me erase that, guys, so that we don't get confused. Pressure cell uh, B and C. Okay. Let's start with pressure cell B. Pressure cell B, this pressure cell. What's this pressure cell represented by B? And what is pressure cell represented by C? Oh, this is C. Yeah. So, let's start with B. This pressure cell represented by B. This South Atlantic high pressure cell, okay, and this coastal low pressure system, okay, yes, let's see, they said PNC, right? Yes, coastal low pressure. You can see that it's close to the continental area, uh, so sorry, to the coastal areas and the low pressure cell. So, you know, that coastal, uh, coastal low pressure system forms on the western side and moves downward, okay, to the southwesterly direction. And then moves to the east. Okay, yes. And that's why you can see there. Okay, yes. Moving in a clockwise direction. Okay. Uh huh. And that's how it goes. So, B, uh, uh, South Atlantic high pressure cell, and C, low pressure system. Okay, yes. Um, let's erase that, guys. Um, okay. Okay, let's move. Um, guys, so 1.1.4 says name the front label. B. What's this front label B here? So this front label B here is called the cold front. Okay, as you can see, um, the shape of the cold front. Okay, illustration there. Simple guys, straightforward. The cold front. Okay, let's erase that. And move on. Okay, let's move to the following question. Um, following question says 1.1.5 state the wind speed at cabin. 
so the wind speed is Evan. So this is Evan, and this is the uh, station model of Evan, as you can see. Okay, yes. So the space station model of Evan is like this. Let me draw here. It's like this, as you can see. Um, okay, so you can go with at least 104. Then um, there's a wind. Um, the, 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 the wind direction and we also have the wind speed that we have out there okay so the wind speed at Japan is 15 knots okay yes 15 15 knots so please so how many marks one mark okay so guys if you didn't include the units which is knots you are not going to be, your marks are not going to be awarded to you. Or maybe you can give you half, okay? Yes. But by the way, please um, include um, the units there. So it's 15 knots. 15 knots at the event. Maybe some of you are, are confused. How do you know that? Um, yeah, it's. How do you determine the wind speed? So the long, as you can see there, okay, we have the long, um, we have the long bar, okay, the long speed bar, and we have the shorter one, okay, yes, as you can see also here the same thing, but the long one, and the short one. So the long one represents ten, okay, this is ten, and this is five. So ten plus five is equal to, is equal to fifteen, okay. And that's how it goes. So if ever, for example, it was like this. Um, here I think I'm going to make a lesson for it for you guys so that you can understand it. So if ever it was like this, simple guys. So let's say clear skies and the wind speed is this, this, and this. So the wind speed here is what, guys? This is 10. This is 10, long one. Long ones are two, so two times uh, ten times two is twenty plus five. The short one represents five, so it's going to be twenty-five knots. Okay. Yes. So the wind speed seven there, represented by that six model, is fifteen knots. Very good. So that's how it goes, guys. Um, please don't forget to subscribe for more lesson contents. I'll see you in the next lesson video. Have a great day. Cheers.